is flat. It's not a sphere. The Earth is flat beneath a big dome atmosphere. The Earth is flat. It's not a ball. The Earth is flat, and that is that, and that is all. The Earth is flat. It does not move. The Earth is flat, and that is so easy to prove. The Earth is flat. Send out the call. The Earth is flat, and that is that. Flat as a mat under a cat. The Earth is flat, and that is that, and that is all. All right, my friends. We have back on our Music Without Boundaries Skype connection. We're in Sedona. Mr. Mark K. Sargent, where, where are you Skyping into uh, this afternoon? I am Skyping to you from beautiful Whidbey Island, Washington, which is just north of Seattle, just south of the San Juan Islands and real close to Vancouver, Canada. How's the weather on Flat Earth up there? Oh, uh, cloudy and rainy. <laughs> It's it's this time of the year, November up and up and up near Seattle. It's uh, I don't know, usually about fifty fifty five degrees, overcast and and um, you know drizzly, partly sunny, partly cloudy, depending on where you are. So it can rain just about at any time. Well, well, thanks for joining us again today. I I want to tell you that my listeners have been riveted, uh, as we mentioned on the on the last time you were on the show for a quick weather report from flat earth Mm -hmm. uh for the first time in our going on four year history of the radio show i had uh more than a few listeners write me privately in in the comment sections in our radio uh chats requesting specifically that i bust out because the episode the particular audio episode of the radio show that transmission that we did with you was about four hours with all the music included yeah and uh my fans actually requested hey would you be willing to bust out just the audio sections of your interview with mark so that we could more easily share it with our friends and other people and and maybe maybe some folks who are perhaps resident to uh, listen to to something so outlandish and, <laughs> and preposterous as the notion of a flat earth. So I was happy to do that. And uh, I've, I started uh, Music Without Boundaries radio show YouTube channel. I busted out the audio portions. Uh, it turned out to be five parts because we talked for a long time, brother. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> and four, four of those parts are up now. And I, I put, I, th- I think, really revelant and relevant (laughs) uh both both sides of the coin slide shot images that help kind of drive home the point and you know they say a picture's worth a thousand words and i think our interview coupled with some of the imagery that uh we included in the slideshow really helps people begin to wrap their mind around such a foreign concept even though it's a concept we heard about in our first kindergarten first grade years of school when they said you know back in the day when people had no clue what was going on the egyptians the mayans the aztecs go down the list they thought the earth was flat but that's that's simply ridiculous yeah agree because let us hip you to what these cats pythagoras and copernicus thought So I did bust that out and, and folks can find that interview. And I know we've got a lot of listeners coming in, in and out because our show's live and it's worldwide nearly every week. And if they happen to miss previous episodes that you were a guest on, I can imagine that already just in this first few minutes of <laughs> conversation, some minds are being blown and some WTFs are being thrown up. Just at the the notion, no of, doubt. at the mere mention of flat Earth, and it's been it's been a shitstorm of activity since we last spoke. I mean, it's it's really come out, and there's a few things I want to talk to you about today. Mm-hmm. Um, one is that I found it intriguing that 
you the first time you appeared on our show was a was a Thursday. Our show is always on a Thursday evening at seven eleven uh, Pacific Standard Time. Mm-hmm. And I like to do that because that gives folks who perhaps miss the live feed on Thursday night. Maybe they can listen Friday when they're because Fridays usually we're done with work for the week. All of us, let's be real. And that's the day you're most likely to listen to your catch up on your music without boundaries at work. Or I know a lot of folks like to listen over the weekend. And I found it odd and intriguing that uh, the Monday after you were on our show for the first time, Google came out and declared uh, that 2015 was the official reemergence of the flat earth theory. Yeah. And a big story, which I was only too pleased to share on my wall, kind of like a, don't say I didn't tell you so. So, <laughs> so I mean, not, and not to say that they were watching or listening to our show or watching our wall or anything, but uh, <laughs> not to say that they aren't. And so that's, that's, that's intriguing. Uh, our listeners, since you've been on the show, have afforded me some really interesting stuff. I believe I sent you one link that really caught my eye that actually I want to discuss with you briefly, which is uh, actual NASA reference publication uh, that dates back to August 1988. Oh yes, and, and one of my one of my buddies, and this is actually a, a truth seeker friend who lives in Las Vegas, and he's he's really resonating with the flat Earth uh, theory, mm-hmm. and you know going back and again this is this is no theory to the people who this is new to. We've only been on the round spinning ball. Uh, notion for let's let's call it 500 years and change officially and really really had had the uh the brainwashing aspect of it driven home with since nasa and in the last 60 years and change yeah so my my buddy did the research and and he belongs to a lot of different groups and and like yourself and many of us i mean flat earth is just one of the things and it's it's just it's it's one of the many things and a lot of things are connected to that and you could say it's it's one of the biggest cover-ups or conspiracy or perhaps uh it's it's one of the things bigger than anything but yet it's a lie that people can't even conceive how it it could be perpetuated for 60 years, let alone 500 years or, or even yeah. longer. Cause Pythagoras was, was even before that. Sure. If there's any truth to the way this is tracing back. And a lot of us, I, I imagine at this point are, are questioning every bit of history that dates beyond the 1800s and back on any, on any aspect. But my buddy belongs to a lot of different tooth, truth groups and he was in of all places a david ike group and i don't know what thread he was commenting on i never actually looked at it but he was he he kept coming back i'm getting flamed out pretty hard every time i try to discuss this yeah in in that group and i said so don't discuss it in that group yeah you know maybe those people aren't receptive but one morning he sent me something and, and maybe his uh his turmoil and <laughs> and the strife he encountered there paid off in some respect because obviously he came across some some folks that also resonated and agreed with uh, some of the thoughts he was bringing forward in in the comment thread or discussions uh, regarding flat Earth and someone uh, forwarded to him which he forwarded to me this NASA reference publication I think I sent it to you I don't know if you had time to look at it but yeah I, I did yeah I found it both what was mentioned in the summary and the introduction, pretty riveting. Yeah. And, uh, I, I can't find an explanation why NASA would print something along those lines with that verbiage. If it was yeah. only going to be applied to something that was the exact opposite of a, a flat non-rotating earth. And so I want to talk to you about that. Mm-hmm. I also want to 
give you a chance to, to speak a little bit. And I know you, uh, you do a weekly thing with another, uh, host that I, I caught a little bit of, uh, it's uh, flat earth and other hot potatoes and, oh uh, yeah. With Patricia. Yeah. yeah. She seems like a cool, yeah, she's really cool, cool lady. Yeah. Um, I want to give you a chance to talk about the whole swirling controversy with Eric Dubay and, okay. and, uh, what's going on with that because, and the cool thing is I was checking out an, another, uh, radio show that I, and for me, this is, and I, th- I think there's no doubt we're going to get into a little bit of territorialism or marking territory kind of thing. Yeah. At some point in this interview, uh, and that's not where I'm coming from. For me, you know, the show that you, Patricia's show, your show, uh-huh. uh, to be honest, and, and there's this other show I want to mention. Uh, if you can believe it, I was up in the middle of the night and and uh, writing notes on napkins out in the car because we're uh, on a little bit of a end of a vacay. After being out on tour and doing some music, we actually traveled from Vegas to Rockford, Illinois, and hit St. Louis and did a couple of shows. And if you want to see how flat the earth is, do that drive yeah. both ways. And I got video, and a video I posted already of an amazing double rainbow. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, what's making the, the dome shape at the top of the rainbow there? Yeah. Someone immediately posted my thread evidence of a, of a dome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I was really, since you've been on the show before we left for the second leg of the tour, I, I made sure to pay special attention and, and video really flat portions. And when you're driving for hours and hours and you just let the video run mm-hmm. and you're just seeing nothing but flat and there's no curve and there should be some kind of a curve that you would feel or experience after 18, 20 miles or so, what, oh, yeah. what you would think would be the visibility that we can, uh, that we can see. You think you'd be able to feel some, some up and down ebbs of that curve, you know, the car chugging to get up, <laughs> you know, going faster, better mileage, gas mileage when you're going down. As I'm driving across on the way back, I had time. On the way to a gig, I'm always in the back playing guitar. I got a little practice amp. But on the way back, had some time to listen to some other videos. And I pulled up one that I really liked, a, a group of cats. And, and forgive me, I'm not sure of all their names. There was seemed like three or four guys on this particular episode of a show called Ball Earth Skeptic Roundtable. And this yep. Yep, with, hosted by John Lebon. Yeah, yeah, I know that uh, one very well. Australian chap, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I got a lot out of that show. I think he seems really level-headed. Mm-hmm. I th- uh, they had Eric Dubay on this show. Mm-hmm. And that's got to be hard to listen to for you. I mean, you're getting you're getting bashed pretty hard by the by the cat. And yeah, yeah. Do you, do you want me to, do you want me to address it? Yeah, we'll address it. I mean, and the first thing I was, I just want to say, because I hope Eric listens. I hope the cats from, you know, Flat Earth Skeptic Roundtable, that's a long show title. I thought <laughs> Music Without Boundaries was long. No. Like flipping the napkin around to read that title. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope they all listen. My intent here is, is simple. It's reconciliation of everyone. It's a truth community. And that old saying, there's three sides of the truth. You know, your side, my side, and the truth somewhere in the middle. I don't buy that. I, there's truth. And yeah. then there's your judgment and then your rationalization. But there's just truth. And that's yeah. that's all I care about. And I entered this this flat earth thing much by accident through a debate that was raging on my wall. I have a buddy who's really into Tesla and he feels that Tesla got slighted in history. And if you do any research, that's not hard to find out why and how. And, you know, we could all potentially have free energy and electricity. And the band Tesla didn't just name their band that for no reason. They wanted to remind people and put that out there. So that his name would live on, right? 
Yeah. Him, you know? Uh, so I actually saw this cat who I, I respect and I know he's really a brilliant cat just through his research on Tesla. And through that, he got in a debate with some guy about, you know, physics and all the stuff that Tesla was doing. And somehow they got in a debate within our radio show, show wall about flat earth. And I just was a third party observer watching this and kind of moderating it. Mm-hmm. But my curious curiosity got, you know, peaked because I've been traveling around flying, you know, as a musician since my twenties. And we've talked before about my, my dad was a pilot and I've flown his plane and, you know, we're driving across the country right now looking at a flat earth. And yeah. so it, it wasn't hard for me to wrap my brain around it and at least be open to uh, exploring the concept, which it's amazing how many people just recoil and, you know, yeah, get angry and, and, and go to, you know, denial and anger straight out of the gate, which is, which is expected. Yep. So that's where I'm coming from on this show and this episode. I wanted to get you on. I invite Eric to come on and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to kind of embarrass myself and throw myself under the bus a little bit uh, as far as Eric goes because I wrote to him before I wrote to you and I came into Flat Earth uh, through Eric Dubé and that was the first work that my friend turned me on to was his videos and they're well produced and the graphics are great to help you visualize what he's talking about. Yeah. And for sure, the cat is super knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's done research into books that are hundreds of years old and you got to admire that. I admire anyone that does research. And my intent here is to create positivity amongst because this concept and what it could represent in the, the restart to the matrix and opening people's eyes at a basic level to so many other things and deceptions that have gone on for hundreds of years. It's such a catalyst that any of us who are all just seeking to find out, you know, what's up here, we don't have time to get bogged down in the mire of, of debating each other and, and getting bitchy with each other or, (laughs) or any of that stuff. I mean, yeah. whether people's concept of the model what's out there is the same or people are putting slightly different uh, models forth anything's better than the globe model you know let's just start there and at least people are researching and my thing i come from the point is of let's leave the ultimate stuff like maybe we leave what's out in space and what's behind beyond antarctica You know, I'm telling friends like, look, I don't know what's there, but what I do know is this, that I understand human nature and greed and how government, which is another word for mind control, you know, which people don't even know that. And they throw that word around. They respect the government who name their establishment after what they do to you. You know, I don't know what's there, but I know that there's a reason that there was a cat named Admiral Bird that was down there and devoted the better part of his life to exploring down there. And I know that everyone was down there, America, Russia, all these countries, and they found something that was so shocking, disturbing, scary, whatever it was. And again, let's just leave it a big upside down question mark that it caused them to behave in the total direct opposition to anything we've ever seen from a greedy money based government business male mindset. They're acting exactly the opposite of the way they behave in any other part of the world when there's resources that this guy was telling us, you know, many, many years ago uranium coal you know everything we needs down there except it's inhabitable and that's the best thing about it is that we could take the stuff and since the, you can't live there who's going to miss it the penguins so there's something radical about that and i don't need to know what's beyond that i think that's one of the biggest questions out there that everyone needs to 
That's what we should be paying attention to. That's what we should be exploring and why when I'm exploring a video on a totally different subject about the Rothschild family, I discovered they, that they own an island just off the tip of Antarctica. That raises my antenna big time. Yeah. So let's start here and let's first, I guess that's a good place to start. Then we can go back to the NASA stuff and some of the other cool stuff that's happening with the revelations that are just, you know, it seems like every week, and this has really been heating up since we could say October, right? Yeah, yeah, since October. And again, I came into this through a buddy through the Tesla thing, and he turned me on to Dubai, and I loved his stuff. And immediately the first night, I was up all night watching his videos, and I resonated because I've been doing yoga since '93, mm -hmm. and he's big into yoga. What led me to yoga was I was studying with Bruce Lee's best friend, Dan Inasanto, at and Marina Del Rey at the Inasanto Martial Arts Academy, which is big on Wen Chung. So I'm hearing Eric DeBase coming from a very similar background. I actually got out of all that because I wasn't interested in the fighting portion or that aspect of it. I just wanted the, the meditation and to be able to calm down and center myself and you know, be able to move through life, you know, without being so fearful and agitated as, you know, a lot of people go through life. So a lot of the things he's living in Thailand, I've, I've traveled a lot and I have, a, you know, I'd love to live in other countries at some point. So a lot of what he was saying was resonating. It was getting me at every hook. You know, he was hooking me at every point. <laughs> yeah. You could yeah. say. Sure. And even as I'm listening to the interview as, as we're driving across the country uh, on the skeptic round table when he's unendingly bashing you. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, even the thing is, is I think he, like, he brought you up in the interview before they even ask about it. And the thing that I think that's cool about these cats is they've had you on the show. Yeah. They've had him on the show. Mm -hmm. I, th I think he's got a lot of merit. I think what you're bringing has a lot of merit and I'm not here to detract or take away from either and quite the opposite. I think what you're both doing, you know, is amazing because it's making people at least ask the question, which how many years have people just been sleepwalking through life like zombies? Yeah. So at anyone that's getting people to ask the questions and I told you coming on the show, I go, I don't know if you're a shill. I don't know if he's a shill, but you know, I'm telling you, I wrote to him before I wrote to you or before I called you, yeah. I wrote to him on Facebook and just to, to nutshell summary it. And I was kind of testing him because I know about the shill thing from, cause I come, my main wheelhouse is nine 11 because of my family's background in airport and government security. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of led me into understanding that the world doesn't work how we think it works and also vaccines. I came into it through the back door of vaccines, which the skeptic ball round table guy, we got to talk. Uh, what's his name? Oh, John LeBon. Yeah. 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 I didn't vaccinate my kids, you know, mm -hmm. based on everything that I learned. Sure. So now I'm coming in through, through the back door. So I'm just open to what everyone's saying. I have no, predisposition and I came into this thing wanting to invite him on my show and and following that I much like the other cats and I'm sure you guys have been on many of the same show and yep. you guys have crossed paths and and I think yep. that's only a good thing yeah um so I wrote to him a, a private message on Facebook and I kind of told him my background And at the time I, I was, to be honest, I was, I was feeling a little weird because I had just, I'd never talked about politics or anything but music and biz. I've talked about business. I've had some business workshops on there, but I've never done any conspiracy stuff, political stuff, religious stuff of any kind on the show. And, you know, over three years on the air. So mm -hmm. when I finally started talking about nine 11, it wasn't like 
two weeks before CIA people were on my wall. And also NASA people came to my wall too. Mm -hmm. You know, once we started doing the flat earth thing and it didn't trip me out. I don't care. You know, my philosophy is with any of this stuff is what's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah. You know, but they let it be known. And I knew that CIA and I mentioned that to Eric and maybe that tripped him out. I don't know. He's living outside the country for a reason. But I was kind of tripping at the time. So I was, and he seemed like someone I could confide in. I said, Hey, do you have time to do a Skype thing? 30 minutes, like a consultation session. I don't have anyone to talk to. I'm kind of tripping out right now. He didn't respond. I saw he read it. And then like a couple days later, and again, I don't know when his page got taken down, but I believe it was still up. He blocked me. Huh. So in the way I worded this, it was kind of a test. I was kind of the way I worded the letter was kind of appealing. Like if this guy's legit and has a, a soul, you know, cause he talks a lot about the people who are doing all this to us, the narcissists and the psychopaths and the people who have no empathy for others. Mm-hmm. he talks about and I agree that you know anyone who would do any of these things like 9-11 or, or perpetrate a, a a cartoon globe or you know false flag shootings or, or any of the like mm-hmm. you know you don't have to question what kind of psychological makeup and what their end game is and he talks a lot about those guys and I, I agree with everything he says, but I kind of worded my letter to him in such a way. And I don't think he showed a lot of empathy and the way I worded it to him was like, if this guy's got a heart, he's going to respond. Yeah. You know, and he blocked me. Yes. So, but again, on that same show, I heard he gives people second chances. So maybe the CIA thing tripped him out. I don't know. So I apologize if that came off weird. But on the other side of the coin, you have your phone number on your website. And I stumbled across your stuff. The first thing I heard was the Navy. And I know I'm taking a while to set this up, but I think I think you'll, it'll, it's going to make it easier for everyone to understand. And it kind of it'll make it easier for you even to take it from take it from there, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I discovered you just in this, you know, like everyone does in the side suggestion feed on YouTube related to Eric's videos. And when I saw Navy, uh, missile instructor confirms flat earth, I was all, I was on that. And that's the first exposure to your show I had. Yeah. And what that cat had to bring to lights pretty riveting. Yeah. You know, there's, a supposed line of sight and a disappearance over the horizon that is known and, and it's 15 to 17 nautical miles. And this cat at night on a battleship is spotting ships at, you know, 50 nautical miles with, with infrared. Yeah. It should be well below. You know? Oh yeah. So here I, and for me, and again, I understand the whole shill concept and we're going to let people, I want you to explain. I'm going to let you be the one to explain what a shill is, but you sure. know, I came into it understanding. I told you before we did the first interview, I mentioned it to my listeners. I mentioned it to you. I'm mentioning it again right now. I don't know who's a shill. I don't care because the, the very definition of a shill and even by Eric Dubay's own verbiage is that, a lot of what they say is right on the money. And then they throw a couple crazy things and let's use the flatter society and Obama quoting that. And people, if you doubt the validity or the seriousness of flat earth, you need to look no farther than the fact that Obama is referencing it to begin with. Cause if it was a joke, if it was something silly or outlandish, keep in mind everything those actors say is very scripted, very deliberate, with total brainwashing rhetoric, 
and they're very skilled at what they do and that people who are in the room and how they react when Obama says flatter society, we don't have time for a meeting of the flatter society and all the puppets laugh. Oh, it's, it's all theater. Yeah. And it's very deliberately scripted. So the public laughs right along with them and blows it off. But the fact that they're paying attention to it and the fact that they're mentioning the Flat Earth Society, they're doing it on purpose because by if you listen to Eric Dubé, they are the disinformation arm for Flat Earth. They're the ones that are going to tell you a lot of great stuff and then they're going to tell you gravity is caused because the Flat Earth is rising. It's always rising. And then it, it puts that bad taste in your mouth. You're like, this is crazy. I'm out. I'm going back to spinning ball. Yeah. You know, so there it is. That's the beginning of kind of the shill thing. And we know the flat earth society is that. Yeah. So why don't you take it from there? And I want to give you the floor to, because Eric, the thing he said, he's willing to debate you. You guys, there's, I don't get the debate thing. Yeah, we're, ta- well, we're talking about something that's cool. It's positive. Yeah. It's a restart for the matrix. It's a way for all of us to yank the rug out from under quote unquote them. And yeah. we'll get into part of the reason he has a problem is because with you guys, cause he thinks you stop at NASA and don't trace it all the way back to where he wants you to trace it back to. Yeah. You know, yeah. But that's everyone's prerogative that everyone doesn't have to go as deep as other people. Other people aren't as deep as other people. And maybe people, the reason why I titled the thing with you flat earth one Oh one is because I think you're a, a good, very grassroots. Uh, you have a way of explaining things to people coming in. That's not so, Eric's a little more esoteric. He's a little more, <laughs> And he has a little bit more. And again, maybe it's because he's been challenged so much by so many dorks online (laughs) and his, his patience is thin. Yeah. I can relate. I, I can't even imagine the kind of responses and challenges. And I, he says he's had offers to convert and go over to the, you know, Freemason side. And he's put that letter up publicly. And I can imagine he's very cynical and bitter with even with people like me writing for all he knows, I'm a shill, yeah. you know, and yeah. why is this cat even mentioning the CIA? Maybe he is CIA. What's he testing me for? Fuck him. Yeah. Block him. Yeah. You know, I can imagine why his patience is short. Yeah. But I don't think it serves his argument because he comes off not just about you, but in his entire delivery, people telegraph their intent, whether they want to or not in their tone. And the way that they communicate their message. And he has a snide, condescending, kind of bitchy delivery in how he talks about a lot of stuff. And granted, you're talking about the government and all these people who pulled a lot of bullshit over our eyes. And it's easy to be pissy about them. Who wouldn't be? Once you start discovering this truth, it's hard to not be, you know, You know, you want to shake someone so I I can feel that vibe in him. So I don't want to confuse that part of his, like he's exasperated. I don't want to confuse that with something else, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So I think I've set up kind of where Eric's coming from and that he was kind of the first on the scene with a book and the video and the thing. And you came shortly after with with your flat clues thing, which might explain a little bit of of the thing right there. Yeah. Um, why don't we just start with what's a shill? In, sure. In your perspective, I kind of explained you because we're all coming from a different uh, plane. What's your perception of what's Definition a shill? A because shill. he's calling you out as a shill in yeah. no uncertain terms. As far as a shill goes. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if there's an official definition for the shill, but from what I understand, it's really the the one syllable name for a disinformation agent who appears to be on the side of whatever group it is, uh, like an infiltrator. 
but they will eventually turn it to whatever way they see fit. You know, may, maybe off the rails, maybe in a certain pa- take it down a certain path, but much to the detraction of the group itself. And that that term, in fact, a lot of people don't even know what it means. It's an easy name to remember. And people throw it around all over the place now in, in the conspiracy world, but I think a lot of people just don't understand what it is. You know, it's it, for me the qualifier for being a shill is someone that's actually causing harm to the group, and uh, I haven't really haven't been really called that that too too much because I try to make myself as transparent and as legitimate as possible right away. You know, I put my, my name out there, my phone number, my home address, my full blown name. You know, you can look up my backstory any time you want on Google. It's not hard to find. Um, but when it, when it came to Eric and I've said on other things and I'll say it here, look, I've, I've never had a bad thing to really say about Eric. And I, I still don't, I disagree with him on a couple of his worldviews, which will maybe, or maybe not touch on, but he contacted me shortly after, I did the clues and he didn't even contact me directly. It was one of his people contacted me. So what happened was he made his videos about two months before I made mine. And then I came out with flat earth clues in February this year. So he would have been, you know, late this either December of 2014 or the very beginning of 2015. And I'd done an interview, and early, one of my early interviews with was with an Australian woman named Lisa Harrison, Lisa M. Harrison, and everything was going great, no no worries. And then after the interview, once I posted it, I got a message from one of his people that says, "Look, Eric's very very upset with you for for what you what you've done in that last interview." I go, "Why? What are you talking about? The interview was the same as the other interviews." He goes, "Well, he goes, one, you're you're not." Uh, preaching the perfectly flat model, you know, you're you're leaving it open to warps and and you know pot, pot potential that, that that it has some warps in it. And I go, yeah, that's the old Orlando Ferguson model. It's kind of shaped like a um, a hubcap or roulette table. Although I'm not supposed to say roulette table because if you add to 666, I did not know that at the time. Now I I know that, but. Uh, and he also said, and you're also mentioning the uh, the moon videos by Crow Triple Seven, and I go, yeah. Me. And hey, mm-hmm. hey, can I cut in? Uh, sure. You cut out just a hair, maybe the one about the. Why aren't you supposed to mention the roulette table? Oh yeah, yeah. Being from had, Vegas, I'm curious. Oh no worries. Ru- suppose and I I looked it up. Uh, it, it was right, which was um, if you uh, if you add up all the numbers on a roulette table, it adds up to 666. And somebody actually told or shot me that in an email, and they said, "Oh yeah, didn't you know that? You probably shouldn't let table anymore." And I go, "I'll be darned! I had no idea." So, so now I don't. Now I say upside down hubcap, or you know, old school hubcap. But it didn't really matter. the The point was is that he didn't want me to. He wanted me to say that it was absolutely tabletop flat. He, he was demanding it basically. And the other thing that was strange was he he said uh, he goes, "Don't mention Crow, um, the YouTube channel Crow C R R O W seven seven seven. Don't mention his moon videos." And I, I've mentioned it before because if anyone wants to see some really really cool things about the moon, watch the lunar wave videos. Uh, uh, wonderful HD footage by Crow triple seven. And he goes, "Yeah, you, you're not supposed to mention him." He anymore. has a go, he has a problem why? with you because. He says Crow Seven Seven is saying the moon's a hologram, and he's like, "Yeah, that means there'd be hologram for th- you know thousands of years. There were no holograms thousands of years ago. The hologram. Yeah. Th- Eric doesn't like that. He thinks it's BS. And no, no, he does. He well, believes and I- that it's a natural luminary. Yeah. And, but but the point Which was seems I said, logical to me. That, I mean, that's kind of where I'm leading. Like it I seems know, like I, a natural. You know that the sun. If you stand in the sun. You know, it's warmer, and if you stand in the moonlight, it's colder. And yeah. it's a yeah. different kind of light, and you can see stars through the moon, and yep. yada, yada. He goes on and on about that, and you can watch his videos in detail and listen to him uh, pontificate it about that at length. Yeah. And, and the thing was, I, I said, and I was open. In fact, he even had, uh, I think it was John LeBon that actually approached it because he knew Eric uh, somewhat before he knew me. And, and I said, I go, Crow Triple Seven has the best moon footage out there. If you want to cast doubt on the moon, and with that, you know, part of uh, the universe that we live in, Crow Triple Seven's got the best stuff. And I was open and saying, if someone comes out with better moon footage than that guy, I will use that. I'll use the best stuff that's out there to, to reference it. And John even put that to me. He goes, if Eric brings you better footage of the moon, then 
then Crow, will you use it? And I go, yeah, of course I'll use it. I've got no problem with that. And nobody sent me anything. Uh, and and uh, until this day, and that was months ago, uh, no one sent anything to me from anybody, even even non Eric's people that were that is better than Crow's stuff when it came to the moon. the The point was though is that he was asking me to do stuff like he was the you know the ultimate authority on this. And yeah, his the work flat is flat Earth czar. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I understand. You know, he broke away from the original Flat Earth Society and created his own, the International Flat Earth Re- Research Society, uh, and that website address is I F E R S. It's just a big acronym. dot com, and he made himself king of it. I get that, but you can't go around and tell people at that point that you know you have to do this. And and someone, in fact, a recent interview he had done, you know, the guy asked him, you know, you're getting accused, of, you know, of saying of kind of acting like it's my way or the highway and uh, that's it's that is kind of true with him i mean he's what he did was that really the the thing that uh, that got him in trouble was he created an enemies list and i haven't seen that since nixon you know an actual full-blown online you're gonna look it up where you know people that he hates and mark Sargent, you're on there buddy i am number one with a bullet and i have never said a discouraging word in text or on air about him and uh yeah yeah number one but the other 13 people on it the you know, the they're a lot of the people in the flatter society so anyway so what happened after after that, you know, I just kind of settled in and, and did my own thing. No, he's never asked to debate me for, for anything because there's that. Why? What are we going to debate? We're on the same team. You know, it's, we, the, we might debate some of the finer points, but it's going to have nothing to do with the actual movement. Um, you know, it, for me, I'm, I'm more open minded and, and real open about concepts. And I've told people several times, I go, look, if a concept comes down the road, I mean, like, for example, the, the perfectly flat plane versus a, a, a roulette table or a hubcap thing. It turns out right now it's leaning more towards perfectly flat. I was the first one to admit that. And I, made, I didn't make a clue on the curve deliberately because I wasn't sure. And only now after you know, interviewing all these people that I've interviewed recently – uh, I'm leaning more towards the perfectly flat thing because I can't find any curve anywhere. Uh, does that keep me up at night? No, of course not. Because w- when I started this thing, I knew nothing about flat Earth. Uh, but <sighs> here's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I've had you on my show, mm-hmm. and I've edited because of editing those videos. I had to listen to them many, 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 many times. <laughs> okay. You know, I have a bit of a photographic memory. My first memory, I I think I told you on our first discussion, I remember in 1962, which was the year I was born, the Kennedy funeral on TV and my mom crying in the kitchen in our house in Cleveland, Ohio, where we live in. And I still remember that to this day. So it's, that's, it's no surprise to me that I'm on this truth sleuth hunt, but I have a pretty good bullshit detector. And whether we're talking about if you're in a business deal with someone or I'm in a band rehearsal and I'm talking to someone or I'm in a relationship and talking about true, I can kind of feel if someone's given me the straight skinny and listening back to all your interviews. I remember every word that you said, and, and I want to restate what you said not only in your interviews on music without boundaries, but the interviews I've heard on your show with the Navy missile guy, the submarine guy, the land surveyor, who else? The IS guy, the valve guy. Yeah. There's yeah. more. I've listened the, to all the, the show. The, the flight instructor. I've yeah. Ne- yeah. I've never yeah. heard you give anything but praise and speak about Eric's work with reverence and tell people you should check out his stuff. Yeah, And when I see s- someone who's like that, okay, I say they're being neutral. They're being objective. They don't have any agenda. Yeah. And I'm not really feeling an agenda. I don't feel that you're putting out any, I haven't heard you say anything crazy enough that could be considered shillish, like that the earth is rising to account <laughs> for gravity. Yeah. Uh, Everything seems that would muck up 
or muddy the waters of the flat earth movement and people could say, oh, he's trying to derail this. I think quite, you know, quite the opposite. I think one of the things Eric has a problem with is your, your, your gaming background and, and some of the stuff you mentioned related to that. Yeah. And to that, I say, well, that's your reference point. That's where you come from. And I, I, when I listen to your show and when I listen to you talk about this stuff, even if even you're opening your show that we live in in a Truman show under don't I don't take that you mean that totally literal, yeah. You know any more than uh, it's you're putting it out there and kind of capturing people's imagination. And some people could get the wrong idea and think Truman Show because it's a pretty small movie. But again, Hollywood hides. What does Hollywood do? They tell us in their movies everything they've done to us, everything they're about to do us, to us, and the things they're planning to do, right? Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe it was in a movie. I've seen, you know, the st- stuff Stanley Kubrick put in The Shining, and if you watch Back to the Future and the 9-11 stuff in there, it starts, yeah. you, th- it starts you thinking. Yeah. Yeah, true. But on the contrary, and it seems, and I can only reference back to my experiences with Dave Mustaine and Megadeth. Yeah. And because I was in that band for a relatively short period of time for about two years. And we're talking back 88, 89. Yeah. But yet the guy still had his chip uh, chip on his shoulder about me and was talking about me and, and bringing me up in interviews 20 years later and lying about me. And my thing is when people put you in that kind of a negative light, especially when they're talking about something that should be as all encompassingly positive as flat earth, there's some kind of agenda there. So I don't get what Eric's about with that and yeah. why he's taking such a hard stance and being so uh, pissy towards you and, and some of the others. I haven't really researched some of the other folks on the list and maybe their shells, you know, whatever I'm, I only, because I'm putting you on my show. So I'm putting my reputation out there on the line as well. So yeah. when he's saying that stuff about you, it kind of bums me out because I've had you on the show and I think you're a good guy. And again, I think a lot of the stuff that any of us are putting out there, if, if we were to put it out there, I think just, if we could get people just to look at flat earth, I don't really care at this point. What's beyond the stars. What's the deal with aliens. Um, is is the moon this or that i care uh, let's worry about this earth and what shape it is can we yeah. figure that out first yep. then yep. and also what's happening in antarctica and why it's the only continent that's supposed to be the most resource rich continent on earth that no one is doing anything about it but yep. yet we're paying for a lot of resources that i believe some of the stuff down there could be solving some of those very issues. Yeah. Agreed. So again, he has, I think he's got in he, I, in that interview, he brought up the crow seven, seven guy and he called you either you're his fanboy or vice versa. I forget how that went down, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, he has a problem with the hologram thing and in the way I, I resonate with, you know, what, he's talking about how the eclipses work and that there could be, you know, a third dark planet or sun or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's been written about. I get all that. What I don't get is, you know, why? And again, maybe he's doing it because he knows just look at Trump and how he stirs shit and it gets attention. Maybe he's doing it for no other reason that, Maybe he feels a little bit you're riding on his coattails because he was the first. He makes a point to say, I had my book done. I had my videos done. I had everything done before I even put this out there because I knew if they took me out or anything, at least it would be out there. Yeah. He was smart doing that that way. And then he's like, and here comes just a few months later, this Mark Sargent character. Yeah. So I could see like if I put out an album and, and it was something revolutionary and then it's like when Eddie Van Halen came out with tapping on the neck mm-hmm. and then 
a month later, a couple months later, some other guys, they're out tapping on the neck. Yeah. I can see that. I get that. I get yeah. it. Yeah. But what, what I disagree with is I hear him. I don't hear you lying about him or anything that he says, the stuff that you say about him. I feel you're quoting pretty much verbatim. And I've sure. heard him say the things that you say he said. The things yeah. he says you say, I know for a fact you never said. And I know for a fact you never said the stuff on my show. And I know that for yeah. a fact you said the opposite. And that you yeah. did not say, this is definitely how it is. There's definitely a dome. It's 100%. And if you don't believe that, you know, you're out. Yeah, It's him that's kind of, it's my way of the highway. You've mentioned the dome. And I'm looking at the rainbow. I'm saying that what's making the shape of the rainbow. Yeah. It could be yeah. a dome, right? Yeah. And, and yeah, some of those videos just came out in the last two months where, uh, in fact, Jesse Spots made a great video where he just, it can't, it's the little things where he said, he goes, why is every rainbow shaped like, you know, like a dome? He goes, he goes, and if you try to make a rainbow inside artificially, you need a reflective surface to do it. And he goes, where's the reflective surface if you're outside and what shape is it? And it's pretty compelling, I got to admit. I mean, you know, what are the odds that's, that rainbows are shaped exactly like the dome we would expect? It's fascinating.